Hey, what's up? It's the Already Construction. You can find us at alreadyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash alreadyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Already Construction. And as you can hear, kind of weird sound effects. Uh, we're actually on the road on the way to a project with Daniel. Road trip! And with your hosts, Alex and... FA48-0285. And today's film is... Demons. Demons is a... <laughs> what year was it? 1988 or something? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's, uh, we, don't, it's, we don't have the Wikipedia with this pertinent information, so we're going to kind of So the way, we, <laughs> the way we refer to characters is going to be... Um, By their... their uh, archetypes. Their true nature. I think I got one battery left. You got battery one battery. Left. It's okay. Uh, so anyway, this film is about it's a group of people years. that attend a movie theater premiere in good old Italy. Is it Italy? I assume, I assume so. And uh, craziness happens... I wish I could have seen that movie theater when I was in Italy. I so, would have visited it. So let's get into the film. The film starts out with a um, this woman on a train, right? Is it is it the subway, the Euro subway? Yeah, she's getting chased, and she's seeing she's seeing images of Vega from Street Fighter in the <laughs> in the yeah, reflections. <laughs> she's seeing the, these reflections of a guy in the uh, in the reflections of the of the windows of the, of the train car and. There's all these groups of people, like punkers, re- really like 80s stereotypes of people. Like, yeah. there's something really about Italian cinema. It reminded me of Jason Goes to Manhattan a little bit, like yeah, that yeah. vibe of it. Yeah, that's about the same, about the right thing. And uh, all these people are really stereotypical. I don't think any of those other people on the train were actually in, in the rest of the film. They could have been, I don't know. But anyway, so this girl, we're going to call her... Uh, Queef, Queef McGeef. Queef McGeef. No, no, let's think of something better. Uh, She's the main heroine to- to- of the film. Toothbrush Magoo. <laughs> Toothbrush Magoo. So anyway, Toothbrush Magoo uh, gets off the train and then she start. She's becoming stalked by uh, this guy with a half of a silver Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, the, which the, my friend just saw yesterday on Broadway. Part. Oh, really? And he said that it's basically about a girl who's horny for a ghost. Yeah, I saw it. That was the first. I had no idea what it was about. That was the first Broadway show I ever saw, and uh, there's a part literally where they where the Phantom or somebody shoots a gun off. Uh-huh. And it sh- I shit my pants because that's how loud it was, the acoustics of that place. Oh, cool. It was really good, though. Anyway, they made a sequel to The Phantom of the Opera where she had a kid with a phantom. It's called Demons, right? It's yeah, that's right. a Demons, actually. And um, so anyway, this girl gets off the train and she's getting stalked by this guy. It was so funny because the whole opening of the of the the movie, they have this weird, like... What kind of music would you call it? There's a lot of weird music in this movie. I like the music, but it didn't... I like it, but sometimes it's funny. It's yeah, it like didn't very fit... very cheesy sometimes. It didn't fit the first sequence, because she's on a train, and, but they're, they're trying to make it really sexy and dancey. Like, right. It's weird. Yeah, I feel like the music didn't go with the vibe in a lot of spots, but it's kind of funny for and that. The score, is, the score is done by the guy who did... Um, all of uh, what's his name? He wrote this. Dario movie. Argento. Yeah. He did all, a lot of it. Dario. Argento. I think his kid is in it too. Supposedly. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, he's the guy who's part of Goblin. And uh, Goblin does all those kind of weird. Wait, Dario Argento is involved with goblins? Or, or the, the, Demons? Yeah, the, yeah. He he wrote the. Uh, he he was one of the writers of the screenplay. No, no, no. I'm. I thought you were talking about like the friggin' No, no, no. There's a music did, uh, band Suspiria called. Or whatever. No, no. The music band is called Goblin, and they did music for Suspiria and all yeah, of yeah. like Dario Gento stuff, which is very. I, I can't really explain the music, but it's just eighty synth heavy kind of rock opera type of music. So anyway, besides all that, the girl gets off the train, and she's getting scared because she's getting obviously hunted by this guy. She, the guy runs into her. He ends up giving her a premiere pass. For a, a completely film. harmless, completely harmless guy. He's got half of a metal face, and she's asking him. She's like, "Oh, um, can you imagine going up to somebody and saying, like, a person with obvious deformity on their face, like, going, right. 'Is this for the premiere of the movie?'" And then yeah. they just walk away in shame. Like, yeah. <laughs> can imagine just going, can imagine they had like the Christopher. Reeves he was story. trying to get his, uh, you know, his, his energy up to ask her out on a date to go with him. To the premiere of the movie, and then because she denies him, that's why this movie goes down the way it goes down. He probably got that job so he couldn't buy bomb for his horribly like disgu- disgusting face. Right. It's like imagine if <laughs> he needs some like vitamin E. Imagine like. if somebody <laughs> came to you 
and was they had to uh, take us to go see the premiere of the Christopher Reeve story, and they happened to be in a wheelchair. And you go, <laughs> you go. And this is part of the movie, and then uh, uh, they just wheel away. Very anyway, politically incorrect. <laughs> so anyway, she gets a ticket. Her friend is around there, who I'd call um, the bitch character, because she seems to. They always. For oh, is it? Is it the black one that becomes? No, no, no. The girl with the black hair. Okay. Yeah, your racism just showed. But anyway, her friend, her best friend, comes out and. Um, they're like, oh, do you want to skip class to go see this movie? She's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So it's bullshit. The whole setup is that they go to this movie theater. They don't even know what the name of the movie is. All these random people. And I guess the movie theater doesn't technically exist as the impression. Like More like it's like a different entry to a different world or it's haunted or something. For, for yeah. a theater that's obviously in the middle of town or the city, yeah. and for people not to know what this place is... Um, it's, it's very strange and Give me the knows. impression Like it's like uh, Shrouded in like Magic Kind of you know Yeah and then here's the weird thing So all these people show up About uh, 30 40 people 25 30 people show up It was like 30 yeah. And they're all archetypes Of like um, Oh I love the black guy The pimp yeah. right Yeah what the hell He that says this one funny. line That is so funny He's like Rosie Rosie What are you doing Or like whatever the hell He says The, 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 main, the main girl's name But it's just really funny And they Destroy it! Smash it! Smash it! Smash yeah. it! <laughs> it's so funny because they, they, the archetypes of the film, and surprisingly, they had they leave the camera on characters for a little bit longer than you thought would be in the film. You know, it, it, it reminded me a lot of uh, Dawn of the Dead. Actually, this actually reminded me of, of uh, completely of um, from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I felt like this movie was. It was just like unrelenting after the first half an hour of the film. Although even here it was 15 minutes of the film. Like shit started getting oh, on the fan. It gets sick at some point. So anyway, these people go to this movie theater and it's a pretty spacious movie theater. And there's like statues of like um, <laughs> people in knight's armor or some fucking kind of cheap. They couldn't even afford the knight's armor. It was like a, a person in a ninja costume sitting on a motorcycle. And the guy has a demon mask hooked on the side of it, and the demon mask is these kind of like Japanese, you know, like the you know the Japanese yeah. type style of demon face. But it kind of like looks silver. like the like the Phantom of the Opera face, basically. Bit. But yeah. it, but it's more full then. It's the full yeah. face instead of just a half face. So they go in, and and this one girl, the pimp, comes in. The pimp's my favorite character in the film. Yeah. And he comes in. He's this great. bald guy with like this mustache. He kind of looks like cigar face. He reminds me of Street Fighter Two. In what way? He just seems like he'd be a character in there. Probably, yeah. Like, I'm sure he's... He's, like, friends with Zangief or something. I'm very sure Japanese cartoons have, like, copied this guy off. Anyway, so he's he's there. He's He looks like Cigar Face from the Toxic Avenger movies, if anybody remembers those movies. Anyway, he's uh he's there with his two whores. So there's Black Hooker number one and Spanish Hooker number two. I mean, we don't officially know that there are his whores and he's a pimp. Though. I think so. Well, the other characters... I, I think so, movie. too, but... Maybe they're just friends. Anyway, so one of the girls, the the um, I feel bad saying the black hooker. Why? Hooker number one puts on the demon mask, goofing around, and she cuts her face, and she's like, "Oh my love," you know, like that. Oh, that was pretty bad. So she, <laughs> the pimp's like, "Oh my lord!" The pimp is like, she was like, "What you doing?" He puts it back. Even though my voice is worse because he sounds more like an Italian film pimp. And, it sounds, uh, it sounds so strange. I wonder if all these people had thick Italian accents because every movie from Italy in the '80s was dubbed really poorly, and uh, <laughs> it's just I wonder what kind of accent he really had because it's, they obviously it's a white guy doing a black guy voice for right. a black character. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so he gets he scolds her for it, and then there's this uh, blind old man with I thought it was his wife. I liked I liked, uh... but it's his daughter. He's with. Yeah, I, I was kind of hoping it was like his girlfriend or something, oh, just cheating on him as he's that, you're into that, You got a boner watching. It was kind of nice, the idea of it. Yeah. So this blind guy comes with his daughter into the movie theater. Uh, I've seen it before. I'd be like, why would you bring a blind guy to the theater? And uh, I've seen he it before because I worked uh, at a movie theater. They had a lot of Selma songs or what? What the hell is the name of that? You know. With Bjork, that fucking movie with Bjork, uh, the guy made Antichrist made. I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's a good movie. Oh, you talk, I thought you were talking about the fat guy that was obsessed with her and they sent her an acid box. No, he they, blew no. His brains out. <laughs> that guy is cool too. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they go into this theater. It's a pretty spacious theater. You know, it's funny how they set up this one girl, this redhead usher. She's pretty, fairly uh, attractive young girl in her early twenties. Who's the usher? She's ripping everybody's tickets, and she's giving all these ominous faces and looks and shit like that. Do you think she was in on it? 
that apparently when there was like a director's commentary, she is a part of it, but she's running around getting chased by monsters too. Meaning, me, meanwhile, I thought she was maybe turn she into got a more than she bargained for. Maybe because there was all these theories on theories on IMDb. I mean, that the guy with the mask, he obviously ran the show. Yeah, but like there were theories that maybe the guy who with the half a mask was like hired these people and they just you know. He hired her and they just put her in take care of the tickets and she wasn't really anything more than that. Right. Anyway, so the people sit down for the film. There's an older guy with his wife who's more the guy who's really into the film because of the characters. And he's so there. mean. Is that the guy that's like nasty to his wife? He, yeah, he's like, shut up, like to people that yeah, are talking in theaters. Loosen and, up, um, you're in a movie. <laughs> a free movie, you know what I mean? So there's, uh, there's the main girl, her best friend, then there's these two other characters. There's, we'll call him hero, or motorcycle guy. He doesn't, yeah. ri- he doesn't drive in in a motorcycle, let's just say that, but th- that name will play in. He drives out in a motorcycle. And he's there and with... Well, actually, drives out in a helicopter. Jesus, how did that happen? So he, he's there, he comes in with his best friend, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and um, Leonardo Black here, DiCaprio. Right. And so they, they sit down for the film, the film starts up. And uh, do you want to describe what the film was? It starts out with a... Uh, who's that band? What's that rock it's, band? Well, it's like uh, basically the film they're watching is the film we're watching. Right. So the, so it starts out with a Motley Crue song. And it's like so cool, the whole shot, because it's so like goofy. It's like... <laughs> Shout out to it's Jeff really kind of cheesy, music. but like it's kind like of awesome. It's like a really old school 80s feel. I mean, obviously the movie is the 80s. It's definitely dated in a lot of ways. But so they're, awesome. uh, they're, um, they're watching this film... And it's so funny that somebody pointed out on IMDb that the guy with the half a mask mm-hmm. is the guy in the film that puts on the mask and gets cut. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't put two and two together. But it, oh, it also makes me. Wonder. So maybe he's like one of those actors that gets so into their role that this is like him studying for the sequel of the movie. But this is the thing: did the demons film this movie? <laughs> and they had an editing and sound guy, and how did they get like? Maybe there's some like warlock that did it or something, you know? Like he conjured up the image. I like or maybe something? that guy with the mask is like a witchcraft guy, and he's like really into this. Yeah, but he's making a movie, right? Yeah. And let's say that those people in the movie <laughs> don't really die, right? Right. Because the the movie within the movie, you know, what's funny watching this movie. I would have been fine watching a movie about people watching a movie. Okay. You know what I mean? It was that interesting because it was so weird. Can you imagine watching a movie with people talking shit through a movie? It would be like a meta experience. Well, that's like um, uh, Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, it's true. But those people are talking shit. These people are just acting retarded. <laughs> yeah, that the pimp film. guy. Like, shut up. <laughs> Stop it. So anyway, um, before that, the two, the, the, the hero guy and his best friend sit next to the hero girl and her girlfriend. And obviously they're trying to do Italian stereotype of the city of love. Or is that Paris? I don't know. Gives you shit. Uh, anyway, so the, the film within the movie is has these um, two pe- uh, four there's two couples on motorcycles driving into this graveyard. And yeah, looking, those people are funny too. They're looking for Nostra, Nostradamus's grave for whatever reason because they were talking. They want to do cocaine in it, maybe or something. And uh, I forget the reason. And then they they open up the. Uh, tomb and they find a demon's mask and the guy who we see later on uh, or earlier on as, uh, as the Phantom of the Opera with half a face on puts on the mask and it gets cut and it cuts back to the hooker number one seeing oh oh shit that happened to me the pimp's like hey that happened to you uh, obviously so anyway the movie keeps going on they're watching this film it's pretty interesting just to see this kind of weird shit going on on screen and the girl starts feeling ill. Hooker number one feels bad. I she love the way it looks when her face bursts. Oh, yeah, totally. I knew you would fall in love with that. Seriously, shit. anybody that doubts practical effects over CGI needs yeah, to just watch, watch this. this fucking movie. Like, it's great. She, just watch the, the multitude of 80s films and you'll see how great they are. Oh, there's a scene where the stuff. teeth are coming in. That is like... That was great. And, and the, the fingernails, fingernails splitting. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's so The great. reason why I picked this film is because there's this uh, YouTube channel that I watch that reviews horror films. And I don't really... I'm not. Is I don't it really called understand. the horror deconstruction. No. <laughs> yeah, I got inspired by myself. I saw myself <laughs> in the future. Wow. No, there's this guy called um, Cinema Apocalypse. Okay. And he's kind of like we're doing basically what he does. I want to say he does what we do, but uh, it's just conversations about a movie. It's not right. really you know reviewing because we're not seeing technical aspects. Just bullshitting. Right? Just bullshitting around, and, and he's really awesome, Cinema Apocalypse. Uh, and so he talked about the show, and he was talking about the same things that you said about the teeth and the nails oh, it's and all that. Sick. It's amazing. It's really amazing effect. Anyway, so the hooker um, goes to the bathroom and she starts mutating because of the cut on her face. And all this giant yellow pus comes out of her face and all this shit. And so she turns to uh, this 
demon. Oh, well, you don't see her turn into a demon. You just see all that shit on her face. It reminds me of the cyst that my dog had, and the vet next door, like our neighbor's a vet, and she cut, cut it a little, and then she squeezed it, and it looked like that. Like all the fucking toothpaste pus coming out of it. It's, that kind of shit is disgusting, but I can watch that on YouTube all the time. I love it. Uh, Just popping zits. Uh, popping zits. No. Cysts. It's amazing. Anyway, so uh, while this shit is going on, the, the blind guy is sitting on the balcony with his daughter. And I guess her lover comes in. I guess it's hard to have a blind dad and then, you know, trying to get some ass on the side. I love the idea, though, that that could be, like, her husband and she's like openly cheating on him like if i had a blind wife i would totally just like bring a girl like she'd be looting like five feet at all times and she'd be now we quiet. know now she'd we know. be a mute that would be her cat she's a deaf mute <laughs> so they could never communicate to each other about this <laughs> so danny uh, obviously hasn't found his kink in this film he's into ntr fetish which is when somebody fucks somebody else behind the other person's back but so, they have to be blind mutes and... Believe me, I, f- I found my kink in this film, and I'll tell you what it is when it comes up. Okay. But anyway, uh, so anyway, the, the blind guy's daughter is banging this guy, uh, some bald guy, I guess. Italy, they don't care about looks. So she's banging <laughs> this guy in the rafters somewhere. And he's like, I forgot his name was, where are you? Where are you? He's talking about Italy. Anyway, so <laughs> we cut to hooker number one, goes to look for a friend because the pimp tells her to. And she goes back and she gets attacked by hooker number one. The pimps go to see movies with their hookers? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I, they'd go with other pimps. He's I, he's a very caring pimp. You know what I mean? He's like a real nice guy. Do you know what I mean? Like he is, he actually, for a pimp, he is kind of a nice guy. Yeah. He takes... Maybe those are his two top bitches that he took to the movies. Right. You know what I mean? right. The other ones, he has them out that night working. He goes, you got your night off. <laughs> anyway, so the first hooker... Gets, I mean, the second hooker gets attacked by the first hooker. She just gets slashed, which leads to her... Ripping, which is a pretty cool scene if you saw... Um, While well, ripping through the screen? Yeah, if you saw Inglorious yeah. Bastards when the one character's yeah. behind the screen of the film, she's Fucking basically awesome. watching it. She's got a giant gash on her face and so she's still mesmerized by this movie. Or maybe she's just getting the idea of what's happening in the film is happening to them, so that's probably what it is. Right. So anyway, the, mo- the movie still keeps going on. And she rips, she tears to the screen because the, the pain of her neck is going really badly. Do you think they gave them free popcorn and soda and things like that? There were people eating popcorn. Do you think it was free, the way the movie was free? I don't even know who gave them popcorn. It seems like, it seems like the girl, uh, the girl Usher was there. That was it. Nobody else. Because there's no projectionist for sure. Right. Anyway, the girl tears through, the hooker number two tears through the screen. She starts mutating. That's why we get the whole finger effect turning into claws and her teeth. Oh, come out. She's really cool. out. Was so cool. She still remains attractive, though. So, Hooker number one was right. very attractive. Hooker number one kind of looks like Michael Jackson at the end of Thriller. <laughs> you know when he turns to the screen? Anyway, so then shit hits the fan, and that's what I like. The movie just goes like. Yeah. It's, it just becomes like the rest of like 50 minutes of people shitting bricks and trying to, you know, escape this chaos that's happening inside this movie theater. And I gotta say, I'm sure it was a really hard movie to write because you kind of have to fight scenes right you have to you have to um up the ante i guess every five minutes of the scene yeah and and they didn't make it boring yeah the only bad part that i would say in the film is that they they inject some unnecessary characters the cokeheads the cokeheads they're they're like all the shoes no i like them but it seems like they cut back to them one time, then by the second time, I was like, who gives a shit of these people? Yeah, are. I kind of wish that Just they... Just cut to the third time. I wish that they went more with them or less right. with them, you know? Because obviously they cut to these group of... Uh, these four people in a, in, a, in a car driving around erratically, and uh, they're sniffing. I, I wonder what it was, because the guy puts a Coca-Cola can up to his nose with a, with a straw, uh. and he's snorting inside, and I was like, is he snorting Coca-Cola? And I thought, it would be cool if he has cocaine inside there. I and think the guy, that's what he did. The, that guy's face, right? The main, those, the main Italian. The driver punker. guy? Yeah. This crazy. <laughs> he looked like a, a fucked up version of Chaz Palminteri. Like, he just I have no really, idea who the hell that is. He was in uh, Innocent Blood. He was the first guy that gets killed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, but she has like a, he has a really weird face like Chaz Palminteri. Anyway, so they're driving around and, and they do it one time and it goes back to the, the, the theater. And goes, okay, whatever. It goes back to them again. And you're like, well, what's it leading to with these characters? Like, you're almost thinking that these people will end up being the eight heroes of the film for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that's what I was kind of like hoping for. I thought they were gonna come in and like bust through the movie theater wall with their car, 
and be like, shout at the devil! You know, just fuck everything up like punk <laughs> heroes or something, but that's not the case. That would have been cool. That's like a Night of the Living Dead kind of idea a little bit. Like, and it, and it, yeah, right. Anyways, by the third time, the camera cuts back to them. Thankfully, it gives them a reason to be there because they obviously stole the car. And here's, my, here's where my kinks came in. What? Because they're sitting in there with that blonde girl uh-huh. who looks kind of childish and it's three guys. So I guess I don't know, I guess she was the girlfriend of the guy in the front. I don't know who she was. Maybe she was doing all of them. Yeah, she, she kinda turned me on a little. But they I dropped see. they dropped all the cocaine in the car and one and they're all picking up the cocaine. And uh, one guy picks it up with a razor blade and he's playing with a nipple with the razor. Right, right. And I was like, Oh boy, I'm a sick guy. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty cool. Anyway, so Alex I'll, is dressed in a full bondage outfit with a zipper. My zipper's mouth open, that's why I'm able to speak. I'm just <laughs> I'm just tweaking my nipples this whole episode. Mm-hmm. So anyway, they drive up to the theater, and these two cops come, and they see that um, that the cars, they, they just see these four punks, and like, who's this? So they run away, and they break into the movie theater. Anyway, while that's happening, the whole movie theater is in a, an eruption of chaos, and it's uh, people are dropping left and right. There's the, the hooker number one demon is counting up bodies and shit. She's kind of like the main one. Yeah, I guess you would say she's the main one because everybody else is kind of like, uh... And then there's that guy that's just, like, hanging in the air, which I fucking love that. Yeah, I liked how his eyes were, like, popped out. Because what happens is the blind guy, his daughter and her boyfriend get attacked by the hooker number one. And, uh, she ties... (laughs) She kills them by using rope from the theater. And she hangs the one guy and kills the daughter. And the guy, like... It was a cool scene because you just see his feet drop into frame. Because this is after the, the, the hooker number two starts attacking the, the angry movie theater guy. <laughs> she slashes open his throat, which is pretty gory. But I thought that guy would be in there a little bit more for some reason. And uh, they kill all those people. And then everybody starts running to get the fuck out. And it's just complete chaos. And has this really cool goblin-esque soundtrack. And all this. It's just basically watching a disaster film. Where they don't. I don't really think I've ever seen any of the sequels. Like I saw this a long time ago. I got yeah. to watch the sequels. Yeah. I think there's like five of them. Really. I don't know. I know there's the demons too, and I was reading up the storyline for it because I don't have to choose another one. I know the music is all like uh, '80s new wave music and stuff. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, apparently in the sequel, yeah, um, Dario Argento's daughter's in it, Asia Argento. So maybe that's her first. The same movie. director too, and I think it's the same exact yeah, yeah, team it is. and directing. Although he says this is his favorite film he ever made. So whatever. who said that, Dario? No, the director of this one. I forget oh, okay. his name. Uh, uh, Italiano Fettuccini. That's his name. Fucking assholes. Almost dying in car accidents, guys. This is almost the final episode of Hardy Construction, guys. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> So anyway, all the chaos happens in the movie theater, and then which leads to, let's just cut to, it gets even loonier. The apparently, right? Yeah, apparently, while all this shit happens, there's a portal to hell that opens somewhere. I guess watching the movie, this happened. What do you mean? Uh, I guess in the outside world, while the demons were attacking these people in the movie theater, something must have happened. Like, the demons could have just attacked the world, and that's fine. Well, one of them did get out, though. Remember? Which one? One of them gets out like right outside the door. I feel like at one point, unless I, I don't like, think so. Because there's that whole that. there's that whole other couple where this guy risks his life to get his girlfriend out, and she turns to the demon while they're trying to escape in the vents. Right. It's so funny because she's behind him. and Goes, I hear the demon behind you. <laughs> and she goes in front of him. and goes, Hey, wait, a minute, I hear the demon in front of you. Ah! Then he just like dies and shit. <laughs> and uh, we never see her monster again. So maybe she got out. But uh, anyway, but. Uh, I think it gets a little more global because halfway towards the end of the film, like there's not really much as we can say, but other than chaos is that it's it's like why there was a video game for PS2 called State of Emergency where it was just shit going on screen for like the whole uh, duration of the game, and this is basically what the and that movie that game sucked, but this movie's good, and uh, it's just that chaos throughout the whole film, and it doesn't really let you breathe. Besides the part where it goes to the punks in the car, which is like two minutes in sequences. Everything else is like nuts, and <laughs> the hero type. But by the end, the I like the the main the, the hero guy's friend sacrificing himself. Right. Uh, I just love the helicopter for no reason. Right. In the middle of the film, the the hero. Oh, well, towards the end, the two thirds into the film. Well, actually, maybe twenty minutes before the ending, the hero guy is with the hero girl, and they're looking up, and they hear they hear like a rotor, or they hear some kind of weird scene sound. Right. Is it, right. Like, what is that? And a fucking helicopter smashes through the roof. It would have been cool if John McClane hopped off. <laughs> he just came off. 
And uh, anyway, but the four punks are already dead by then. They just disappear in the movie. They just kind of vanish. The girl's the first one to get killed by the book number one. And everybody else just gets killed. They, they come in, and for no reason, they, you just see them get mobbed by the demons, and that's it. Although I do love that sequence. Cause, um, unfortunately, they kill the pimp, too. If that fucking yeah. hero guy would I just wish listen the pimp to him, was the hero. I, me too. That's what I was hoping. Because the, cool. the pimp was like a leader type for like three seconds. You remind me of Zorro from uh, Frankenhooker. Yeah, right. And They would have been friends. The pimp would have been fucking awesome. And if the hero would have just listened to him and cut that fucking rope, the pimp probably would have still been alive. But anyway, that pimp character was awesome. And anyway, one of my favorite scenes is like they show all the demons running up this hallway. And they had it in a slow motion. And all their eyes are lit like lights. And it's fucking sick. There's really cool sequences in this movie. Yeah. But anyway, so does that part where the helicopter falls through the roof. The main character's trying to get in. And, uh, I don't know. He, that, that was after the I motorcycle the scene, right? the cuts the face off. Right, right. The, oh. they, they find a way to, to start the helicopter blades up and yeah, start amazing. smashing people. Anyway, but there's this whole scene where he gets on a motorcycle. <laughs> and he rides in a circle around the theater about six or seven times slashing at yeah. the demons. Yeah, it's kind of funny. And I got confused because I guess one of the demons used a hook to cut him. Because I thought the demon bit him or something. Because he's got a gashed arm. And I thought, why is he not turning into a demon? But then I had to go back to see that. Ooh, you hear that? It's a uh, truck. It's a truck. It's alright, it didn't sound that bad. So, um, anyway, that being said, they have a final confrontation with the Phantom of the Opera on the top of the roof. And, I uh, wish she was like, you know, the ultimate demon or something. Yeah, he just kind of seems and to be And there is a asshole. really cool demon that rips out of a person, and I love that scene. Yeah, too. that was like a classical, like, it gave me the heebie jeebies looking at it. It kind of had that. Like the old, uh, it's like a little imp, like the kind you'd see in like Renaissance. Et, yeah, like etchings are like that yeah. kind of weird etchings. And anyway, so the hero and the girlfriend get out basically at the end, and then we're treated to the fact that she herself has become a demon because they get into a uh, uh, like a little jeep with a family in it, with a father yeah, and his two it's kids. It's like worldwide now. So apparently, while that, so why did the demons? You think? Why did it all happen so quickly? That was the only part that was a little... I'm thinking it all happened at the same time that the movie was playing. Like, you think that the sacrifices in the movie theater kind of opened up the portal of hell, maybe? Well, one of them did get out, like I'm saying. It did, and... Uh, yeah, but it kind of seemed worldwide by the time... I don't think... Or at least town-wide. It, Italian-wide. Yeah. Italian-wide. Like, people were dropping the spaghettis left and right. And hey, came. those are demons! They're coming to get us! Quick, eat your spaghetti! Oh shit, a fungul! They like That's that. Asian. <laughs> a fungul? No, but the way she's the voice who said it. <laughs> oh, this is terrible! <laughs> you know, it's a bit trouble! Anyway, that's my Italian accent. But anyway, oh look, are those God hates Fax people? No, oh, okay. I hope not. I hope not. Oh, that's pretty bad, those guys. <laughs> so anyway, um, so of that, what do you think were the best parts of the film? Uh, fuck, definitely, hands down, like, the special effects. Oh, God, they're so good. The special effects are really good. I like the whole soundtrack. Yeah. I think that was crazy. What are the, What was the worst part of the film for you? It's a little disjointed. It and felt it. it kind of jumps into things without really explaining it. I them. think the disjointed part happens primarily because of the punks. The that, the punks, like, if they had, like made them the hero or, right. or some kind of main character. It, 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 felt, it felt unnecessary for the punks to be in the film. Honestly. Yeah. They didn't do what they meant to do. With it. I could tell they were going forward but they didn't do it. And I, also, uh, I think the, script wise that they were like, oh we gotta break this up a bit and have it go outside for a second. The, the idea that it's like the apocalypse and everyone has accepted this at the end it's like that didn't happen in an hour. That, you know, like right. they, they could do better jobs at explaining things but it's a great movie still. Yeah, so anyway, um uh, yeah, I would say that. And uh, so, what kind of rating do you give this film? I give this a nine out of ten. Uh, fucking sick fingernails splitting, and you can see it. Oh, it's so cool! Actually, it's awesome. It really is. Yeah. It's a it's a really cool like. It's a very good exploitation horror film. Like amazing because yeah. you're just watching shit hit the fan for an hour straight after the first fifteen minutes. Cool. It's really cool. It's it does not let up besides those punk sequences. But it, it definitely a watch. So I'll give it an uh, eight out of ten, or eight point five out of ten. Um, delicately removing cocaine off of a girl's nipple as she watches you lo lusciously mm. or lovingly. Anyway, with that, what's our next film? Is it your choice? I picked demons. Oh, okay. Uh, oh yeah. Um, oh, uh, Night of the Demons two. Uh, and the so then, you know the uh, original series, not the remake. Right? 
<laughs> so, Danny, what's the final word? No turns! The horror deconstruction.